one party needed to control the legislature. Wheeler targeted 70 state legislators in Ohio who opposed the league, and by 1903 had driven every one of them from office. In 1905, when Ohio's popular Republican governor Myron T. Herrick, himself a reformer, dared try to weaken a so-called local option law that allowed each community to decide for itself whether to prevent alcohol from being sold, Wheeler denounced him as the champion of the murder mills, unleashed the full fury of the league, and crushed him at the polls. Throughout the country, anxious politicians in both parties began warning one another. Remember what happened to Herrick. The lessons that have been taught by this contest are important, Wayne Wheeler said. Never again will any political party ignore the protests of the church and the moral forces of the state. The League's power spread steadily, eventually reaching into all 46 states, overshadowing the women's groups that had been working for temperance for decades. The old prohibition weepers and gurglers were quite incapable of this enterprise, but the new janissaries of the anti-saloon league, they understood the soul of the American politician. They knew that his whole politics, his whole philosophy, his whole concept of honesty and honor was embraced in his single and insatiable yearning for a job. And they showed him how, by playing with them, he could get it and keep it and how by standing against them, he could lose it. 